Burnham. I'm the chief vehicle engineer for the Tourbillon. So what you see behind me is the rolling chassis for the Tourbillon. It's a very unique asset because it shows really well the key parts of the new platform that's underneath the Tourbillon. The Veyron and the Chiron platform has been the, the backbone of the Bugatti models for the last 20 years. But regulations move on, the, the world moves on. And so this has given us a great opportunity to redefine the next Bugatti platform, which is about taking what we've done before and building on it. We always thought, OK, how we can do this even better? How we can do a design that is even more beautiful than the Chiron had? And therefore, we started thinking on the fundamentals, on the basics of the car, in particular about the general architecture of the vehicle. And we thought about, for example, how we can get the car to have better proportions, to have better aerodynamics. In our, let's say, perspective was how we can further enhance the experience or the driving experience of the customer. And when we started looking at this specific aspect, then we had to start looking at the powertrain. We have this amazing V16 normally aspirated engine, which we wanted to use to improve both the efficiency and the emotion of the car. It's, it's a packaging challenge, and having a clean sheet of paper with the new platform allowed us to package everything around this amazing powertrain. At the front of the car, we have five of the eight radiators. The two on the outside are the main engine cooling radiators. And in the middle, we have some of the cooling for the cabin and the electric components. And the air for those centre radiators is fed from the horseshoe on the front of the car. But we divert that air to the sides and out through the top of the bonnet so that we can preserve in the middle the luggage space. Behind that we have the electric axle which is very integrated snugly in the structure to keep the wheelbase low and that's two 250 kilowatt electric motors and those are connected directly to the front wheels and that allows us to give a full four-wheel drive capability but also the ability to use torque vectoring to divert torque to one front wheel or the other to improve performance and handling. Then we have the suspension and here is a good example of one of our skeletonized structures. Uh, you can see that the way that the optimization has been done that you end up with a much more skeletonized structure and a much lighter structure than a conventional suspension wishbone. So here we can see the battery, which is fully integrated into the monocoque of the car. And in the cutaway area here, you can see some of the battery modules. And the battery goes along the tunnel and there are also modules behind the seats here. It's around 24 kilowatt hours which means the car will be able to do more than 60 kilometers in electric only. Here we have the main monocoque of the tourbillon, and there are a couple of key technical features here. One is that the seat will only go up and down, it will not slide backwards and forwards. That helps us to both keep the wheelbase short, which helps with weight and package, but also helps us to keep the height of the car overall lower. We also have the, the driver and the passenger slightly closer together and all of that helps to keep the frontal area of the car low which helps us with the aerodynamics at the very high speed. So since the seat doesn't slide the pedal box and the steering wheel will move forwards and backwards to, to give the driver their, their ideal driving position. Here at the rear of the car, we have the heart of the car, the naturally aspirated V16 engine. And you can see what we've had to do to keep the wheelbase of the car under control. It's a very long engine, but the wheelbase is actually only 29 millimetres longer than the Chiron. So we've done that by pushing the engine 
right forward, the fuel tanks have moved to the side and it means that the engine is very close behind the driver and passenger and that keeps the car compact. You can see here the, the back of the transmission and the rear electric motor, which is another 250 kilowatt motor. So having the rear motor, we can either use that to augment the combustion engine, or we can drive in a fully electric mode using either that motor or the motors at the front of the car. The key to making the package of the rear of the car work is having these integrated crash structures, which are integrated with the diffuser. So it means we can avoid having a complete rear beam right across the back of the car, but instead we have a, a more optimised solution that's integrated into the diffuser. Overall, you can see why it was very important for us to, to have the ability to do a whole new platform, to properly optimise and integrate all of the, the technologies in this car. The first uh, thing that I'm more proud of is uh, how the overall concept of the car uh, comes uh, to be very visibly uh, as a result of uh, almost a single creator. I don't know how to say this, but uh, even if this is not the case, there have been many contributors here, but it's such a complete uh, and holistic product. And you can feel this and even when uh, uh, you look at the car. It seems uh, like it's not like many parts added uh, on top of each other. It's just uh, something that, uh, starting from scratch, has actually generated a very well thought and uh, complete product, like uh, drawn by a single hand. If uh, I would have to describe the new Bugatti in one word, I would say uh, uncomparable.